Hi, this is Judith Karakshoni, Salman Alana, and Manos Berlakis, and this is case 208 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating use of the Stingray catheter twice for recanalizing a CTO with a bifurcation at the distal cap. The patient was a young gentleman with medical refractory angina. He had single vessel disease with um, a CTO of the mid right coronary artery, intermediate lesion of the LAD that was negative by physiologic assessment without any ischemia on stoputamine stress echo. This is the anatomy. We do have a CTO of the mid RCA at the takeoff of a large acute marginal branch. There is diffuse disease and calcification of the distal RCA. There is a bifurcation of the PDA and a large right posterolateral. To summarize, we have an ambiguous proximal cap at the takeoff of the acute marginal. We do have length of about 40 millimeters. We do have diffuse disease and calcification of the distal vessel, and there is the bifurcation of the PDA PLV. There are some septal collaterals coming from the LAD. There is also an epicardial collateral that is coming from the circumflex, large epicardial collateral. Our plan here was to start uh, with undergrade using IVUS guidance to see if we can clarify the proximal cap ambiguity. If it didn't work, uh, use ADR. If that didn't work, try to go retrograde through septal. As a last resort, try the epicardial. So we advanced a guide wire easily into the acute marginal branch, but could not deliver the IVUS because of disease and calcification. So we did a predilatation with a 1.5 millimeter balloon, and then we were able to deliver the IVUS and try to determine the proximal cap. And unfortunately, one of the limitations of using IVUS is that it does not work when there's much calcification. So here, there's calcification, but it's really hard to tell for sure where exactly is the proximal cap. Likely, it is somewhere in the territory, but again, we cannot see behind the calcium to see exactly where the proximal cap is going to be. So we tried different things. We tried um, with um, a C on black during, during the RAO projection, see if we can advance it uh, down into the RCA. And then after multiple attempts, we were able to advance a knuckled gladius mongo guide wire along the course of the RCA. So we're now moving along with the vessel. So we know we're extra black, but we're moving with the vessel. So our plan here was plan B to go in the ADR. We do have diseased, but potentially doable distal vessel. So we delivered a stingray balloon. We do have an eight friends trap liner, both for support, but also to reduce the risk of hematoma formation in the distal right coronary artery. And we did multiple re-entry attempts with the double blind stick and swap. So we stick both between the two markers and proximal to the proximal marker. That was done um, with... Um, a guy and X3 wire. We tried multiple wires actually, including the Astado, the guy and X3 for sticking, the Pilot and the Gladius for swapping, but we were unfortunately unable to get into the distal true lumen. The wire kept on staying into the extra plug space. So after multiple attempts, we decided to switch retrograde. So we tried through the septal branch and uh, here we were able, after multiple attempts, to advance uh, the guide wire along a fairly tortuous collateral. And then uh, it eventually um, moved into the distal trilumen. But unfortunately, we could not get the carabel to go into the process. We actually lost the wire position. So then we decided maybe we should try the epicardial. So we have a caravel into the epicardial. We can see that there's some torsosity, but the size is large. And we were able to advance a SUO3 guide wire. The problem is that the guide wire kept on going distal in the vessel instead of following the proximal. And this is where the exit angle is important. This exit angle is pointing towards the posterolateral distal segment instead of the proximal segment. So we could not, despite doing multiple attempts, multiple wires, multiple brands, advance the guide wire retrograde this way. We did some pictures. So we can see again that the angulation is not very favorable. Um, we even tried to use a Sasuki dual microcaster, but we were just not able to um, advance the guide wire 
retrogradely into the distal RCA. Well, at this point, we thought maybe we should go back and try again the septals and see if we can advance a wire in the septal. And we did do surfing again, but unfortunately, this time, we were unable to get into the PDA. So here we are again, back into the undergrade approach. We have an extra plug wire in the undergrade, so we decided to try the stingray again. Bob Sled tried different locations, um, and then um, uh, do a little microcatheter. We're trying to get a wire both in the posterior lateral as well as the PDA because we want to preserve both branches. And multiple attempts later, we were able to advance a guide wire extra plug into the posterior lateral. So now we have extra plug wire in the PDA and extra plug wire into the posterior lateral. Stingray again. And this time we were able to re-enter into the distal true lumen into the posterior lateral tried to re-enter into the PDA, that was not easy. And it took us quite a while, but eventually bobsledding, trying different guide wires, we were eventually successful in re-entering into the distal true lumen. So here we failed to re-enter proximal to the bifurcation, so how to do separate re-entry into the posterior lateral as well as the PDA. The challenge, however, now is we have uh, a lot of dissection along the bifurcation. So this is an example where we definitely need a dual stand technique. And in this case, the DK cross is the preferable approach because we don't lose wire position in the main vessel while we're doing this technique. So DK cross to 515 stand into the right posterior lateral, rewire and did the first kissing. And then we placed the stand um, going from the distal RCA into the PTA, rewired, did the second kissing, and then essentially stand it all the way back. There was a residual lesion in the PL that was successfully standed. And then we finally covered the proximal right coronary artery. And this was a nice final result. We do have TME3 flow, both in the PDA as well as into the right posterior ladder. This was a very challenging case because every technique we used was not working initially. And this is an example of how persistent and changing between various strategies can be very important for being successful. Here, undergrade wiring didn't work, ADR didn't work, retrograde through septals didn't work, retrograde through epicardials didn't work, eventually ADR with double re-entry was a successful crossing strategy. Dual loop microcatheters can be very useful for rewiring into the side branches and trying to wire across steep angulation. Sasuke was very helpful here. In this case, we crossed initially with a wire, the septal, but uh, somehow we were not able to cross with a microcatheter. So being aware of various techniques to be successful in crossing the septal can be useful. Trying a different microcatheter, potentially dilating the septal, potentially using a guide extension for support, all these things can help facilitate that. We also learned that the epicardial collaterals can be nice, but if the exit angle is unfavorable, we may have the situation we experienced here in which we actually had the wire go distally and we were unable to turn it to go proximally. So having a favorable both entry but also exit angle is important when choosing which collateral to go through. And finally, the key for success in this case was using the double re-entry because of the bifurcation of the distal cap. So we re-entered both in the PDA and into the right posterior lateral and used a dual stand strategy with DK crash to ensure that we had patency of both vessels. Thank you.